This next grouping of exercises are actually quite challenging. Now, if you've been working on that front plank, your side plank, you're in a really good place. Maybe worked on some of those progressions from the push-up hold. You're getting a lot of solid work in. You want to be focusing on eliminating that unwanted movement and staying nice and solid, keeping that straight line. Now, if you've come to a place where you've mastered those and you're like, I need a little bit more of a challenge, you can start integrating some of those level twos with your dead bugs, your bear crawls, moving up, and then eventually you might want to try some of these. Now, some of these you might be really attracted to because they look really cool, but remember, it's not about how cool it looks, it's about how much control we can have. So start from your building blocks at the beginning and move your way to here where we're at at level four. So we're gonna start with our first one. It's called the walkout. I'm gonna get into my push-up hold position, nice and solid, hands staying out of my shoulders, and I'm gonna simply walk out my hands. I want you to notice what is happening as I walk those hands out. One, as soon as I reach my arm up, it's like doing a plank reach, and my hips start to wanna to rotate, so I'm gonna fight that. And as I walk my hands further and further forward, my hips are gonna to wanna to drop and my back extend, and so I wanna fight that as well. So it's a combination, it's kind of an all-encompassing core exercise. So, level one is going to be just doing that one step out, step in. And then you just make it harder as you reach further and further. Now you wanna be mindful, I'm going pretty far here, but I'm really having to fight that I don't drop my hips. So you don't wanna to go too far, you wanna make sure that you stay under control that whole time. So that's the walkout. Now a variation of that, that's also very challenging that we can do from the core, or rather from the plank position, is called a body saw. So I'm gonna use two, two and a half pound plates, and they're gonna be sliders under my feet. You can use actual sliders that you buy at a fitness store, but this will work just fine. It'll slide here on this rubber. So I'm gonna get into my plank hold position, elbows under my shoulders, straight body, and from here, instead of walking my hands forward, I'm gonna push my body back, and then I'm gonna pull it in. So it's the same challenge with regards to keeping my hips from falling as we were doing with that walkout, and pull it in. The one difference here is I haven't added that rotational challenge that I get with the walkout. So two kind of different exercises that have some similar goals, both worth trying. It depends on what surface you're working on, whether you can use those weights. If you're at home and you've got kind of a slit floor like hardwood or linoleum, you can just put a t-shirt under your toes and you can do that one. So those are our walkouts and our body saw because you're sawing, in a kind of in a sawing motion on the ground. The next exercise that we're gonna do kind of falls along the line of that walkout in that we're gonna be fighting the rotation and um, also fighting that extension and that flexion that we don't want, and it's gonna be the plank up. So we're gonna start in that push-up hold position, nice and solid, and then we're gonna drop down into plank position, so bring ourselves back up, and back down, you can alternate which hands you're gonna to use to move up and down. If you wanna throw a push up in there and make it a lot more challenging, you can do that. But that's kind of one of the ways that we can start along with our body saw and our walkout. Some of the ways that we can make our core exercise a little bit more challenging um, if we've really been able to master those previous levels of exercises. So there's tons more exercises out there Enjoy kind of surfing the internet to find them, but ask yourself this question. What is the ultimate goal of that exercise? If it's just seeing how often you can curl and crunch, it's probably not something you want to do, but if it's something that's going to help you focus on controlling movement, then for sure, go after it, try it out, make sure to be safe, don't do something that you're unsure about, and of course, you can always ask your phys ed teacher. So that is the end of the level one to four course series.